Hello everybody, before I start the video, I'd like to shout out ACC Eber, which is Rebe Rebecca backwards. Um, she'll be up here. So basically she does like really good reaction videos. I usually don't like reaction videos, but I actually really enjoy hers. Um, very chill, very, very chill. Uh, yeah, go check them out. She has like Doctor Who, Supernatural stuff. Right now she's watching Supernatural. Um, so yeah, go check her out. She kind of inspired me a little bit to to do um, kind of film reviews again. Uh, but she's got a really small channel, even though like you'd think that she'd have much more subscribers. Anyway, go check her out. She's great. And yeah, uh, let's get on to the review. All right. So today we're going to be doing a review of Yi Yi. Yi Yi is a Chinese film. Uh, from Edward Yang, made in 2000. Uh, I think he directed and wrote it. So this film is kind of about three people within a family. You could say it's more um, kind of, they kind of follow the brother-in-law of the main character, sort of, even though there are like kind of four main characters. Uh, basically, we go through their lives. And what's really interesting, um, I said this much better in my last take, but it doesn't matter, all right? Let's just pretend I said it better in this one. Um, you see their entire sort of, it's like a slice of life film in that we're kind of peering into their life uh, through the extreme wides and master shots. We're kind of not seeing it up close. It's like we're, we're kind of looking from a window, um, which is something the actual characters do, um, like the daughter does in, in the film. She's watching this neighbor of hers, um, she's watching sort of her relationship with this with this guy, and it's really interesting because we can we can we know exactly how they feel, we know exactly what they're going through, but it's it's from like sort of a, a wider perspective, uh, like we're kind of we we have kind of binoculars from like ten feet away, and there are these beautiful shots, and they're not intended to be beautiful in any way, in any way, um, they're intended to do it through a storytelling art house kind of different way of showing characters they don't have this medium and they're panning back with a medium you know like every or, you know over the shoulder shot like every other film does which is incredible because um although i am a fan of a lot of over the shoulder sort of traditional cinema techniques and some are done really really well roger deakins best cinematographer my favorite cinematographer ever he uses over the shoulders, so that says a lot. But this film does something different, which is kind of showing everything from behind and from afar. Although there are some wides and mediums, so most are master master shots that are taking the camera, throwing it back. Um, no breathing of the lens, no kind of changing of aperture, changing of focus. It's just simple, and it works very, very well. And it's almost like films uh from the french new wave uh, well actually after the french new wave around the french new wave era um like gene dealman which is actually one of my recommendations um after watching this film and that you're you're taking someone's life and you're just watching it it's that simple but it's incredibly in depth and we get to we get to see how people struggle with their past also there's some editing techniques in it that are similar to films like chunking express and one car wise films also, his, one of his films is in The Recommended, too, funnily enough. Um, in that, he, the director's mirroring two experiences. And, and, and now, I don't, I don't believe Wong Kar Wai does that a lot. Um, but I feel like he does in that two characters, or one character is mirroring another character. And there's a, there's a part of the film where the daughter... Uh, is having this experience with this this young man. Um, she doesn't know how she feels about him. And they cut from that straight to uh, the father, who's with this this uh, woman that he used to be with, that he left. Um, by the way, no, uh, there are going to be spoilers. Um, I'll probably have that somewhere. Don't know. Don't know where. Probably at the beginning of the video. But, you know, I'm talking, I'm going in depth kind of about the film. I'm talking about the film. It's gonna happen. Anyway, um, so we're, we're kind of getting that mirror uh, of this contrast of these two characters. 
that are going through a very similar thing, but a very different thing at very different points in their lives. One early, one late in their life, kind of one reflecting on what has happened in the past and one looking to the future, wanting to get something. And it's this incredible sort of contrast of two characters that makes you wonder why filmmakers don't do it more um, in that contrast yet similarity of life of events in life of things people want in life um through relationships or whatever whatever that be whatever that is anyway there are a lot of similarities to a lot of films i noticed and the more i think about it the more i find those similarities for example the child yi yi i think is his name his character reminded me a lot of how we saw the young boy's character in The Squid and the Whale, which was a Noah Baum Baumbach film, I believe. Um, and it's incredibly interesting because we get, we get to see every character's perspective and we look through the world in the way they look through the world. And this kid is very curious. He's running around. He's kind of doing crazy things, doing things that um, you wouldn't do sort of a little older. But he, he has a reason for doing all those things. And it's incredibly, it's, it's very, very lovely film in that um, we get to follow this kid around. We get to live his life, essentially. And we get to sort of feel, feel like a child again. Um, I haven't seen The Florida Project, but I'd imagine that's sort of a similar thing. Um, and I thought that was really, was really lighthearted and really, um, really nice to see. Obviously, that not everything's a good, uh, sort of good perspectives and not all things that are happening to them to him is good but we get to have that perspective and that's always an achievement in film when you're able to actually give that perspective properly so yeah um i think i gave this film a 9 out of 10 i don't like doing ratings too much i don't like relying on them i just like talking about the films i like talking about what i like and what i don't like um but it's definitely one of the best films I've watched recently, no doubt. And I'm actually very happy I, I watched it. I was waiting to watch it for a while and I just didn't watch it, didn't watch it, didn't watch it, you know, watching something else. Um, yeah, really good. Uh, so I'm going to go through my three recommendations. Gene Dillman, In the Mood for Love. So uh, I don't know who, I think it's Chantal Ackerman made Gene Dillman. There's a full there's a full name for it. I just call it Gene Dillman. Um, very good art house film. Bear with it. Bear with it. Be patient. Okay, if you love films and you're a film student like me, be patient, trust me. Um, In the Mood for Love by Wong Kar Wai. Beautiful film. Absolutely beautiful film. Reminded me quite a bit of this film. Oh, well, vice versa. Uh, and Amour, which is like a, a another French film. Very, very slow. Um, but it's got a bit of charm to it. Um, I wouldn't recommend that one too much. Uh, that one's the most slow out of all of them. But... Um, I'm kind of given similarities here in films that if you like, if you really like this film, you'll probably like these other films. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed, I'm, I'm enjoying coming back. I'm enjoying making uh, reviews again. Um, it's not going to be a really consistent thing. Uh, I'm not a YouTuber. Okay. Um, if you want consistent stuff, go to ACC Eber. She uploads like uh, every week, I think. She's fucking great. Um... Yeah, uh, I'll, I will be trying to make stuff, you know. Um, if you see the same outfit, it's because I'm recording it twice in a row. And I don't want to get the goddamn focus. Oh, it takes me 10 years to do the focus. <laughs> um, and the autofocus doesn't work on this camera. Um, but I will probably do, be doing a sort of top five TV shows I've been watching in quarantine. Maybe some more art house stuff. Top five, like, art house films. Dunno. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how I even feel about doing that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Maybe I'll do a second second review if I watch it again with the audio commentary on Yee Yee. See where the inspirations came from. I'd be really interested to see that, actually. I'm, I'm probably going to do that now. Um, but yeah, come back to see some art house stuff. Talk about some, some smaller films. That's what I do. That's, what I, my, that's why I make a channel. That's why I made a channel. Is because of, I, I want to see this kind of content, basically. I want to see... People go in depth about smaller films and, and films that I've talked about, talked about as much um, in the film community. And as a student and as a lover of cinema, I think it should be done more. So yeah, um, that's about it.
peace out from the Neon Hunter. Alright, we're recording. <laughs>